Hello guys and welcome to a new Stone Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a first look at the 5th Cavalleria Motorizata, which is a new division available in the Black Sunday DLC for Steel Division 2. If you'd like to read the description on the right hand side then feel free to pause and have a look. But in the meantime I'm going to jump straight on in and we're going to go about this the same way as we have previously. So I'm going to go through each of the tabs, we're going to look at all of the new units and then I'll make a new division from scratch. So let's start off in the Recon tab. Well, the Recon tab's pretty strong. We have some strong Recon infantry here in the form of these Kalari. But we also have access to a lot of light tanks. So the R1, Horch, the Saw, and the R2. Let's start off by looking at the Moto Mitralier though. So this is of course a Recon motorcycle uh, with a machine gun on it. Generally don't use the machine gun too much. You're going to want to put these on return fire. They are great budget radios for the front line, allowing your artillery to uh, get corrected shot. And they also provide very high optics, which allows you to spot things at the furthest distance. So that's useful. And with very good stealth, they can hide in light cover quite well, as long as there's not enemy recon nearby. Then we have the R1. The R1 is just a light tank with uh, two machine guns. It's okay for you know longer range engagements. If you keep it at above 500 meters, you should be okay because the PTRDs and PTRSs won't be able to pop it. So the R1, I think it could have some potential and it's a relatively fast tank, so it could get out of trouble um, for like how old it is. It's reasonably fast. Then we got the uh, Chachitash, these guys are the two-man recon squads with exceptional stealth and the uh, very high optics. So good squads to have hidden around the place. Um, put them in high ground or like in the top of a church or something and you should get reasonable line of sight for the rest of the game unless they get found, which they shouldn't do. Because they won't give themselves a range, uh, give themselves away at past 100 meters range. Uh, so they're generally going to be very hidden um, unless a, like an infantry literally jumps on top of them. Uh, they can come in a few different transports, but nothing really special. Just the uh, AB247, uh, which is probably the coolest looking recon car in the game. And um, yeah, it's awesome, but not particularly effective in any way. It's fast with a machine gun. I guess that's about it. Then we have the SBW222 or AB Horch in this case. Uh, this is a really nice light vehicle to have available on its own because 222s are pretty strong uh, they can put they, they can lay down very good fire support against enemy infantry and you can also swarm like a medium tank with them quite easily as well because they put quite a lot of suppression uh, down with their gun uh, they are vulnerable to at rifles and light at of course so that's what you've got to be looking out for with these uh, but in general very good vehicle and uh probably going to be making good use of those. Then we got the uh, Lunatist. These are two-man sniper squads with the exceptional stealth and very high optics again, but this time they have, of course have a sniper. Uh, the snipers are okay, limited in availability here, two, four, and six. Not too great, so we'll see if we want to add them. Uh, in terms of transports, just the same as the Chichitash. Then we have the AB Uswa. This is the same vehicle that the Fallschirmjäger get access to. So it's interesting. It has the uh, Breda 35-20mm on it and can do a reasonable amount of damage. Very fast again. Uh, can certainly pack a punch against infantry, more specifically. So something to use alongside the Watch, maybe. But not sure if I'm going to bring it in yet. Then we have the R2. This is just a, a standard Panzer 35T, I believe, Czech tank uh, originally. It uh, has the 60mm of frontal armour. It does have HE and two machine guns, so it can provide reasonable infantry support. And then the AP shell, probably just good for picking up light vehicles and transport sniping mainly. Not terribly fast, 28 km per hour off-road speed and 35 km per hour on-road speed means it's going to take a little while to get to the front line, but could be handy. So 
I might add it. Also, I've got a different camo on here. The uh, custom camo that comes with the DLC that you can choose in the armory should you uh, want to. Then, last squad, Kalari. These guys are pretty damn good. They've got two submachine guns, they've got a sniper, and then they've got seven rifles, which are slightly better than normal bolt action rifles, but they're still bolt action. So they have a little bit more damage overall uh, than like their standard rifles. But yeah, they're better. So these could do a serious amount of damage at the 500 meter range, especially with the sniper firing away underneath the fire of the rifles. That could be pretty damn good. Also have a Panzerfaust. And with a very good stealth, you could probably try and sneak up on some stuff if needs be. In terms of availability, you go 2, 4, and 8. So in phase C, these could get quite useful. Right, moving on to the infantry tab, let's have a look. We've got the Rashiare. These guys are 20 point squads with 5 rifles and 2 machine guns and a PTRD. Uh, not terrible. Uh, like at the mid range engagement, they're going to be pretty good. I think the only thing that really lets them down is, of course, the strength of the squad being eight men. Um, but otherwise, you've got the upgraded rifle plus the machine guns. Then we got the Granitieri. Um, these guys are nine rifles, machine gun, sniper. So, absolute monsters at 500 meters. If you can get some good veterancy on them, uh, you can make this rifle do quite a lot of work. Um, I think it's more or less the same damage though as a Car 98. There's nothing super special about it. I think the only thing that I really like about the Romanian infantry is their uniforms look really clean, their helmets and their guns just look really well modelled and textured, uh, which is really, really cool. Now these all come in just Ford trucks, so nothing too special there. Then we have the uh, Pioneri. These guys have two submachine guns, seven rifles, MG34, and three HE uh, grenades. So they're there for your close range engagements, uh, whilst also still packing a little bit of a punch at range. Like having the MG34 is uh, pretty useful indeed for those ranged engagements and outmatches the ZB30 quite a lot. Then we have the Pioneri. Uh, Kalari. These guys have basically a similar lineup, but in terms of their second two guns, they get one more machine gun, but it's a ZB-30, and they get the upgraded rifles. So they're slightly better at the sort of mid-range engagement, but I don't know if they're worse, probably at closer range. I'm not, I'm not sure if I can really make that distinction, but yeah, just a slightly upgraded version, I guess, than the standard Pioneer. Um, then we got the Rosciare. These are the standard line infantry as opposed to the Rosciare PM. Uh, these ones are the ones with like the two uh, machine gun and just rifles, whereas these ones actually have the Beretta M38 as well. as seven rifles and two machine guns. So again, another monster at the sort of mid-range, really. And then the AT rifle or the AT grenade, sorry, for uh, close range uh, AT capabilities. You get 12 on a card in phase eight. It goes up to 32 in phase C. Then we have the leaders of the PNA with the two submachine guns and three rifles. And we've got three smoke grenades there as well. Pretty nice utility squad or utility leader. And then we got the Rashiari leader as well, which is the. Uh, Beretta M38, the three smoke grenades, and a Panzerfaust. Uh, probably not as good, mainly due to the lack of availability. It looks like the uh, Pioneer here are probably going to be a bit better in terms of availability. Neither of them have radios, though. Bear that in mind. Then we have the Pioneer Assault. These guys are really good. <laughs> really, really, really good. Uh, eight submachine guns, two Flammenwerfer, super close range, strong squads. Do a lot of damage very quickly, and you can get a reasonable availability as well. Five in A, ten in B. They're not going to need much veterancy to put out the damage they have, the better that in mind. 
and yeah it's great with those two flamethrowers going nothing really gets much better than these in close range combat then we have the Rosciare Assault. These guys, four Beretta M38s, eight upgraded rifles with this carabina, and the um, two Molotovs there. So 12-man Molotov squad. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. I probably could be better if they all had some machine guns, but that would be pretty broken. <laughs> uh, quite expensive, I guess, at 30 points. Uh, I think it's a reasonable price, actually, for them. Uh, but, yeah. Strong squad, strong squad. Then there's a card of Beglites. I mean, if this division needed any more uh, <laughs> good infantry, I mean, seriously. <laughs> Beglite Grenadiers, eight MB44s. We've seen these before. G43s and the MG42s there. Seriously, probably one of the best mid range squads in the game. Well, at the 300 meter range. So I guess shorter <laughs> range squads in the game. But uh, seriously, seriously good. They come at one veterancy base, uh, which is really, really nice because you make the three-star veterancy very easily uh, with the leader-commander combo. And so they start ripping things up. Finally, the Pianere uh, Calari. These guys are a leader squad of three men armed with a Panzerschreck, basically. Pretty good, but just very expensive. Like, it'd be nice if these were a bit cheaper. I think if these were 30 points, people would probably use them. But I think personally, like, having to spend that much for a leader squad is a little bit too much. Actually, mind you, both of the other leader squads are 30 points. And these are way better because of the Panzerstrack. So maybe it'd be worth bringing them in just to provide you with that reliable AT. Right, moving on to the tank tab, not really much to see here, just a card of Panzer II Lux, uh, which might be good for supplementing, or well, not really supplementing, but um, joining your strong early game light vehicles. Um, 20 mils are always welcome, and this one has one, uh, on a decently armoured hull, which can maybe bounce a few PTRD shots. It's, really, it's nice and fast as well, which allows it to do quite a lot of damage and manoeuvre itself about quite quickly. We got card of Stugs. The Stug is sporting the new camo available in this DLC. Very cool. And these are available, standard availability 5, 10, 15. We've seen Stugs before. And then we got the Stug G Führer. If you want that as well. Not really much space for it though, honestly. I'm not sure if it'd be worth bringing these in, but maybe better than the Panzer II looks just because you have things with 20 mils in the recon tab that you can bring in abundance. Moving on to the support tab, we've got first of all the Gendarmi. These guys are eight man police units. Uh, so they have the trait here, the discipline trait. The friendly units within the range of this squad won't surrender. And that's pretty useful in certain situations. Uh, the fact that they're an eight man squad makes them a bit more useful, in my opinion, than Fel Gendarmi. But they are pretty limited on availability, and that's probably the worst part about them. So they're better in terms of like combat effectiveness, I think, but worse in terms of you know usefulness because of their lack of availability, unfortunately. Then we have a card of Schwalose. These are your standard Schwalose machine gun units, 1,200 meter range. There's also the ZB-53, which is an interesting machine gun. But it has a 1,500 meter range. Worse than the MG42 uh, though, mind you. Then we have the Abrida AC47. This is actually a hell of an, AT, uh, hell of an infantry gun. Sorry, um, It has some serious rate of fire. 20 round per minute rate of fire. 46% accuracy. It's go the accuracy goes down on the HE shell. But for the rate of fire, this accuracy is going to go up very, very quickly. Because every time you fire... You get a little bit of an accuracy buff. So, yeah, the, the fact that it's got this rate of fire allows it to be way more effective. The damage isn't incredible on this 47mm shell, but the fact that it fires again so often does allow it to apply a lot of damage very fast. It, like, it doesn't come from the damage, it just comes from rate of fire most of the time. Uh, so these come in at one star veteran, so you can make the three star very easily, which is going to pull that rate of fire 
up to like 29 or 30 round per minute, which is actually insane. And uh, yeah, you can get nine in, in B and six, 12 in C. Probably want to bring these in A though, because they are just so good for supplementing your initial push. Uh, we do see the supply trucks, the good old Fords. We've got the Hotchkiss here as well. Uh, this is available uh, 40 point squad, 1,500 meter range. Has the extra damage there compared to the ZB-53. But I believe it applies less often than an MG-42. So although it has similar stats, I don't think it, the Hotchkiss is as good as MG-42 at that range. Not entirely sure though, don't, don't quote me on that. Um, then at the bottom here we've just got the Commandants. So we've got the Infantry variant, the uh, Motorcycle, and then the Half-Track Phase C. I'm moving over to the anti-tank tab. We got the Pushka, uh, Antika. These guys are just three man AT rifle squads with the Solothurn AT rifle and three smoke grenades. Uh, nothing particularly special about them. Maybe useful for uh, rushing and transport sniping at the start of the game. We have the uh, Panzerstrex. Panzerstrex, of course, are always very useful, uh, but sometimes don't fit in the deck. I think in this case, having Panzer Strex is important to supplement your infantry just because um, lack of reliable AT is something that uh, this division can suffer from. Do have access to four cards of the 45mm AT guns. Uh, these are great uh, early on. But then you have a card of the Reshita, uh, Reshita um, AC 75mm, which is a very very strong AT gun. This thing has 15 round per minute rate of fire base on its AP shell and then it goes down to 8 round per minute on its HE shell. That's base. So yeah the AP side of these AT guns is pretty damn good. 45% accuracy as well. You can boost that easily over 50% and uh, get some pretty reliable shots in. Uh, depending on range, of course. Uh, but for 8 damage, 160mm penetration at 70 points, this is pretty damn good. Doesn't rely on APCR like a pack 40 does. So that's nice. Although I guess uh, in some ways the pack 40, the fact that you can turn off the APCR to increase rate of fire when you turn it back on again and turn it off, turn it on, turn it off when they fire and so on and so forth. It's called uh, like the APCR tricking. Um, this obviously you can't do it because you don't have enough types of ammo to do it. You've only got the one AP variant. Um, so yeah, either way, the Reshitsa, um AT gun, very, very good. And I expect to be using that. Into the anti-air tab, we've got the Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss is uh, not used too often, I don't think, if, unless you kind of have to. There are certain divisions where this is like all that's available. Uh, so you tend to bring it in, but nah, not a huge fan. Uh, you got the Hotchkiss uh, 25 mils. These 25 mils are a bit more reliable at shooting things down than the 20 mils. So that's something to uh, look out for. Uh, can be brought in with the Hotchkiss truck as well. So that kind of gives you a two for one there, which is quite nice to save you on activation points. And then we have the Bofors. The Bofors, I think, can also be brought in with the Hotchkiss. Although it does make the card quite expensive, and the Bofors is more than good enough on its own, so probably doesn't require the Hodgkiss to bring it in. Uh, there's two cards of the Vickers ACA 75 mils. Um, the Vickers ACA uh, has 145 millimeters of penetration with a 12 round per minute rate of fire. Pretty solid at 80, uh, but does of course have those HE shells with 2.2 damage, which is actually reasonable against infantry, and of course the anti air capability. Uh, very much work like an 88 in terms of anti-air. Both is, of course, um, we've seen before. So I'm not going to go into them too much. STKF Z71, standard stuff in the anti-air tab. Artillery, we've got the Artilleria. These guys, the observers. Two-man squad, there for your radios if you need them, with the exceptional stealth allows you to hide them in heavy cover, unlike the motorcycles. Uh, these can be brought in with the recon unit as well, the recon truck. So you could do that if you wanted. Uh, you've got the uh, leader, 
Artilleria. These guys have 10 strength, uh, 40 points. Standard stuff, same as the Visivod and other um, artillery leaders. We've got 60mm mortars, 81mm mortars and 120mm mortars in the mortar variants. So plenty of choice there, the 60mm mortars being pretty fast firing. Um, can certainly get a lot of shells on target, but might not necessarily do a lot of damage or pin very well unless they're very, very close and have corrected shot. I don't think they just use radio, so they won't need corrected shot, but yeah, they need to be very close to be accurate. Um, then you've got the OB, the F-22. Here, the 76 mil. This is a pretty awful gun to use. They can be used to some effect on mass, um, like on a on some divisions that have multiple cards of them if you brought like loads in phase c and then just spam them with like fire at will orders then maybe they could start to just suppress the enemy constantly but i'm personally not a huge fan of the f-22 then we have a romanian biplane the iar 39a uh, this thing is pretty cool it comes with 24 cluster he bombs uh, which aren't very effective. They're going to tickle infantry squads, really. Uh, but the nice thing about this plane is not only does it have a little bit of an armament, it also has 310 km per hour speed and brings in 150 millimeter off map, which is pretty damn nice. This thing is, uh, well, technically 152 mil off map. You get 120 shells, which means if there's three barrages, you get 40 per barrage, 40 shells coming down which is quite nice saturation on target. So yeah, a decent off-map vehicle for sure and probably going to be something you want to use. Um, then finally, the only thing I haven't pointed out yet is the 122mm in the artillery tab. Now these things can't be brought in and anything's really fast. You can bring them in the FAMO F3, which is a standard truck, or you can bring them in the Skoda um, with the munitions. So it has uh, 10,000 munitions with them. So that's pretty nice, but generally you'd use these as AT guns rather than actual artillery. But I'm not sure how useful the supply would be because it makes the 122s very expensive. All right, finally, we have the air tab. And uh, there's been a lot of new stuff to go through here. So I think even more uh, new stuff here, really. Um, well, a few more, a few things. Uh, let's start off with this JU-88D1. Nice camo, remaining colours, recon, 40 points. Nothing special, reasonably quick for the size it is, 465 km per hour speed. It's just a uh, yeah, standard recon, nothing too special about it. Then we got the IAR-37. This is a recon biplane uh, with 12 50 kilogram bombs. 270 km per hour speed is pretty quick for a biplane. It's the same model as the... Uh, artillery, I believe. Oh, this is a 37 in the air tab, and it's a 39A in the uh, artillery tab, so a little bit of a difference. But this thing, it has a couple forward-facing guns, I believe. But that's about it. And you're not really going to want to dogfight with this thing. It's more maybe for early game bombing cheese, like onto convoys and stuff might work. Um, yeah, reasonable armament. Right, then we have the IAR ATM. This is a Romanian fighter. Um, it has two 20 mils in the wings and four 30 cows. This goes 485 km per hour speed. It has good firepower, but it kind of lacks in the speed department. I feel like there are a lot of fighter bombers that go a lot faster than it, so it struggles to intercept those. Uh, its agility is okay for its speed though, which is quite nice, and it's a reasonable price at 80 points. Then we've got the ME109E7 with its remaining colours, two 20 mils, two, 30, um, two um, machine guns. Excellent agility is very, very nice here. Probably get them in B for four of them, quite nice. And then we've got the JU87D3 with cluster bombs. Again, another lovely uh, paint job on the plane. To look at it has the uh, good agility there with the upvet medium agility normally next up the iar atm br21 so the iar 
Romanian fighter with the BR-21 rocket system, which is 210 millimeter rockets, good for uh, destroying support weapons. And these did get a buff uh, a little while back um, to make them a bit more strong against AT guns, so you can pop things easier in one hit. Um, so, yeah, I think this could be worth it just because the firepower remains in place from the fighter itself. So, yeah, it might be worth uh, bringing these along. Then there's a card of the ME109 G4R6s. These, again, have Romanian colors uh, with the uh, the Mickey Mouse logo on the front. Uh, two 20 mils on the on the wings. We've got the gun pod, or the, sorry, the 20 mil on the nose, gun pods on the wings. Uh, and then the two machine guns, of course, as well. So a lot of firepower, 600 kilometers per hour speed. This is a good fighter, but you don't get many of them. HS-129 B2R4. This is a cluster HS-129B2R4. And this cluster AP is reasonably spread out. It can do a lot of damage, though, with 96 available of these two kilogram cluster AP. So it leaves a nice big spread for sure, but very slow, very easy to intercept quickly. And so unless you have anti-air to cover these as they try and escape, uh, they're probably going to get shot down quite easily. But might be worth having just to throw at tanks that you can't usually kill, things like IS-2s. My HE-111s, we've got the 8 250kg bomb variant here. Get one in phase A, two in B, and four in C. 310 km per hour speed with very good resilience. It's a decent payload. I do like this payload set up for the HU-111. And then you've also got the JU-88A4, which is uh, four 250 kilogram bombs and 50, sorry, 16 50 kilogram bombs uh, to go with that. 360 km per hour speed with very good resilience again. So a couple nice bombers with decent payloads. I like those. Um, the other aircraft are going to be hard to choose between. So with that done, let's actually build a deck. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video than usual because there was a lot to go through there. Uh, but I've also got to decide kind of what my deployment type is going to be. Now there isn't much in the way of tanks uh, to really bring in in the late game. So you're going to struggle against late game armor, which makes me think that this would be better as an early game division, more flatline based. You can probably get away with doing like a balanced or juggernaut with the amount of bombers you can access in phase C with the JU-88s and the uh, HU-111. You could probably make a, a decent sort of balanced deck with this for team games. Uh, but in terms of like general use, I think flatline is going to be the best, so just so you can apply pressure even in team games at the start um, as quickly as possible before having to go into the defensive against heavier tanks and trying to find those ambushes. So we'll do a flatline for this one. And if we jump into the recon tab, I'm probably going to want the Kalari. I think these guys are pretty good, even though they have limited uh, availability. You have a lot to work with in the recon tab you got very nice uh four cards at only one activation point and then three at two definitely want the horches or the sbw 222s not sure if i want them in a i think they could possibly be used for an a but probably better to bring the a b or so in phase a so we'll do that and then i'll bring the horse in phase b i think not sure if the R2 is worth it. The Panzer 35 is cool as a new unit in the game, but it's very slow and it's not particularly uh, strong. Probably be better off like relying on Kalari and uh, just like Panzer Strike teams and stuff like that to uh, deal with any armor. So, yeah, I think we're going to leave those out. I kind of want to try out the R1s. I think I might just pop them in there for now. We'll put in another squad of Kalari in phase B and tempted to bring in the Lunetis, but the Kalari are just better in this case. The Chichitash is tempting, it's tempting, but yeah, I'm not sure. And uh, I think I'm just going to leave it at that for our recon tab for now. I might come back to it. Okay, this is going to be a tough tab. The infantry tab, 
it's very cheap in terms of activation points, but you don't actually get that many cards. So I'm going to have to be quite a stickler here. The Bug Lights are definitely worth bringing. I'm probably going to bring them in A, I think. And then aside from those, we'll bring in the Panzerstrax as leaders, which can be pretty useful. And then I just need to find out what infantry I want to bring. Because we only have like one of each type of these, and then we just got the Rashiare. Um, these guys, 10-man squads. They are good squads, though. So not, not the worst thing in the world to be relying on. I think I'll bring the Rashiare and uh, we'll bring in the Rashiare PM in phase A. And then we'll bring these uh, Granitiare uh, or Granitiare in phase B. With the sniper there. This mainline infantry having a sniper is actually really, really obnoxious in game. And then we're going to need probably just at least one phase C card. Definitely want to get these two cards in here though. Thinking about it. So, Pianero Assault. Probably going to go for phase A with those. And then we'll bring these in phase B maybe actually no let's do it the other way around we'll put these in phase a we'll put these in phase b okay and then Rashiare in phase c i think that'll be okay although pianelli are pretty good i don't know if they're better because they have the machine guns there might be worth thinking about I've got my long range infantry, and I've got the close range infantry and book of lights. Doesn't really. I don't, I don't think you need more than that. The uh, Granitiere. Um, I'm not sure if these are worth it in B. I guess so. Um, like having the abundance of snipers there is pretty broken, to be honest. And Pioneri Assault in Phase B was also going to help out with closer range engagement. So these are good for the longer range engagement. These are good for the close range engagement in B. And then that's just a fill for the rest of the game. Unless you can get a lot of these in Phase C. I don't believe so. No, those are two lower numbers. Uh, these guys, they have decent numbers actually. But I think I'm just going to rely on what I've got. The Pioneri Calari in Phase A might be better than the Rashiari PM. I think I'll do that. Because you've got the same armament, more or less, at range. Just don't have a PTRD, you have a HE instead. Which I think is good for the early game. Okay, let's move on to the Tank Tab. Tank Tab is going to be Stugs, I think. Uh, probably Phase B Stugs. Because in Phase A you're going to be running around with a lot of light armor. We're going to need as many as we can get, so no room for veteran C. I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. Might come back to it. Um, definitely want the Redders. Probably going to just bring them in phase A. No special transports for these. Um, Torch would be best. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, then we have the Zebi 53. Could be worth it because of its range. Uh, the fact that it can help suppress at 1,500 meter range is pretty nice. Definitely want the Commandant. And we're going to have to consider supply. Probably don't need much supply. Probably like a phase B supply would do the trick. Because I'm probably going to do... Maybe some 122s for backup AT. I don't know. Hmm, this is a tough deck to build. I think we'll go for potentially the Hotchkiss in phase A. I want to kind of try those out and we'll also maybe try out these guys as well. That gives me extra machine guns in A. And then probably um, phase B supply, I think. I might add more. Um, it depends how many action points we have left. 
Right, the Pushka Antika uh, don't really have uh, a place in the deck, I don't think. I think it's a waste. The Phase A Panzer Trex, though, is necessary. I'll bring those in. I will bring in a card of Phase A AT guns, and then we've got the Rashidza. Um These guys, probably B and C. Yeah, we'll do B and C. Great for helping us with the heavier tanks. Anti-air. I think I'm going to do the Bofors. Probably Bofors in phase B with extra veterancy. And for phase A, we'll do something a bit cheaper. So probably just these Hotchkiss. I think we're going to do, and then phase C, we'll add some big guns. Cool. That'll do. The SDK of Z71 might be worth bringing as well. Yeah, we'll bring that in as well for now. I might remove it if we need more points. Okay, uh, this IAR, when do we want it? Probably... I'm thinking maybe phase C, you could probably get away with it just because it's so fast. So you get a lot of off map down in the late game. But then again, we're playing a flatline deck. So yeah, I think I'm going to remove these SDK Z71s thinking about that. Yeah, we'll probably go for phase A off map. I think we'll have to do that. We'll do 81 mil mortars. And Maybe I could get away with more leaders in the artillery tab. Do artillery leaders in phase B or C maybe. I think we'll do B. Okay. Right, that's almost as much as I want. Like the artillery is kind of bad in general. The 122s might be worth it. I think I might actually bring them in in B with Upvet like with higher veterancy because that way I can make the three star veterancy more reliable on their main gun uh, with the heat uh, to kill tanks if I need to. But air tab. Air tab's pretty cheap so let's go ahead and whack in a few things here. I really want to try out these guys in phase A so I'm going to bring those in. Um, I think these bombers are good but I'm not sure if they fit the flat line. I do want to try out these, the IAR ATM BR21s, so we'll bring them in in phase A because you get three of them. Um, the JU87D3 again, phase A because you get three of them. Just this basically, this is giving me options. So if I come up against like uh, an AT gun or something that's killing a lot of my light vehicles, I can pop it with an IAR ATM BR21. Um, if I need something that's to kill a heavier tank, like an IS-2 at the start of the game, then the JU-87 will do the job. That's pretty much my thought process there. Um, the HS-129B2R4 might be a good shout though. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that instead actually. We'll bring those in Phase A and they'll bring the uh, JU-73s in Phase C. Because having the anti-tank capability is super important. Okay, G4 R6s are really good. I think I'm going to bring them in in phase C. Because we're going to have like fighter bombers in phase A. They're going to be slow though, the 435 km per hour speed. Not sure about that. Maybe we need to bring in some ME109s as well. Uh, that could be an idea uh, in phase A. Yeah, we'll do that. So we'll leave out the big bombers because we're not playing into the late game. We got a couple cards of fighters to keep the control of the skies. We do have some reasonable anti-air. That's okay, and we got two points spare now. So where am I going to put these two points? There are a bunch of options. We could bring in the R2s. I don't think that's worth it. I think it's a bit of a waste of a card. Lunatists, probably a waste of a card. Bring in another unit of Kalari, like 8 in Phase C might be a good idea to kind of supplement the uh, Rossieri, and uh, that could be a good idea. The other things we could have done is add more tanks, get some Stug, 
three Gs in phase C maybe. Uh, Anti-tank, probably not worth it. Um, Anti-air, probably not worth it. And artillery, definitely not worth it. I think uh, adding that extra unit of infantry in the recon tab is a good idea there. Yeah. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it at that. It's a very rough deck. I don't. I'm not completely confident with it, um, or in it. I'm not com confident in it. Um, so I would recommend having a mess around with it yourselves, guys, um, if you want to copy what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and name that deck. And we're all done. So I think this has a lot of potential for like strong phase A play uh, with an abundance of great infantry, especially like the Rachiari Assault. These guys are fantastic alongside Baglites. You've got like an awesome combination of infantry in the early game. Um, so make those three star veterancy squads and nothing is really going to beat you at long range and close range. So fantastic for that situation. Of course, your lack of like heavier tanks in the early game is going to really suck. But you might get away with cluster bombing them if they really become an issue. And generally, people don't push heavy tanks onto you, like on top of you, um, right at the start because of the risk of things like Panzer Strikes, which you do have. So um, that will stop them from running you down. But there you go. That's the uh, fifth Cavalleria Motorizata. And... Uh, very interesting division. Maybe we'll suffer against armoured divisions, but in a 1v1, certainly fits the better of strong infantry. All right, that was a very long one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the look into this new Romanian division. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.